So, we've discussed uh, problems where players are allowed to uh, enter into binding contracts and you had a set of payoffs that, that could be achieved under binding contracts. Now, suppose players are allowed to communicate, but, but there, are, there is no scope for getting into binding contracts. So, when they say that they are going to play a particular strategy, there is nothing to, succumb, to, uh, to bind them to that. Right? In this case, what uh, now you, so you, you have a set of payoffs that can be achieved therefore with communication but without binding contracts. And then there is a set of payoffs that can be achieved with communication and binding contracts. So, which is the larger set? So, so, the set of payoffs that can be achieved with binding contracts is the larger set and the reason for that is because if a payoff can be achieved uh, without binding contracts, then the same payoff can also be achieved if the if that contract was binding, right. So, uh, so, is, so the, you have this inclusion that payoffs that can be achieved achievable with communication and binding contracts this is a superset of payoffs achievable with communication only And this here is a superset of payoffs that are achievable achievable with only direct communication. Okay. And this in part further is a superset of payoffs that are achievable under Nash equilibrium. Now, we, this was also a point of confusion last time some of you asked me later about uh, you know what, what exactly is the discussion uh, distinction between payoffs achievable with communication and direct com uh, versus direct communication. Now, I will uh, so I will today what I will do this a little more uh, elaborately because uh, I think the la it did not come out very well last time ok. So, firstly remember all of these things right amount to pre play communication. All right. So, players are communicate. So, all the communication uh, that is being allowed here is pre play. So, before they commit to uh, before they actually choose their strategy, they are announcing what they want to do, they are trying to you know uh, influence uh, others, they are creating lotteries and or 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 random draws uh, and so on. All of this is pre play, but when it comes to finally going and choosing the action that at that time they then then choose their actions independently all right so even when we were looking at binding contracts when binding contracts were allowed right even here the problem for the players was to independently choose which contract to sign right the you had a game initially with some set of pure strategies and it was augmented with the with additional strategies where the strategy was whether to whether or not to sign a certain contract right the choice of signing the contract and you could have any number of such strategies you could keep adding con more and more contracts to the whole picture right so so the, so that choice of which contract uh, of uh, of whether to play your original pure strategies or to sign a particular contract that was again being made independently all right but then where the the contracts being binding meant that the, when you choose that strategy uh, choose, when you choose to sign it you are bound by that those uh, by whatever are the terms of that contract all right now now payoffs achievable with communication alone again has the same flavor we this is pre play communication players are allowed to communicate pre play but once the uh, communication is done they go and choose their actions independently all right so now 
what this means is so if you think about this what is happening is that so we had two frameworks here one was correlated strategies and the other was uh, strategies with uh, that we said we could augment the system, we augment the, the problem with a communication system that allowed players to communicate now in in either of you know you can look at it in either way essentially what's in if you have a communication system then what is happening is pre play players are sending reports the communication system is generating messages and then using those messages players are now going and picking their strategies all right so all this pre play communication is make correlating their uh, correlating their uh, you know their uh, the, the strategic choices right so now what effectively happens is so once the uh, you can think of it uh, you can think of it this way that the other framework was uh, the one where there was a mediator and the mediator was uh, had a, uh, was recommending an action to all of these players and again once the recommendation is made uh, recommendation is made confidentially to the uh, to the players it is the players choice whether to follow that recommendation or not right so therefore we we impose that a, for a for a, for the, for such a correlation to be uh, to actually be uh, a for 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 a payoff to be achievable under such a correlation it has to satisfy the obedience constraints right so that means once the once that is received once this uh, the the uh, recommendation is received it is in the interest of the player to follow the recommendation so with recommendations this is kind of easy to understand now what happens in the case of direct communication so here is here, here there is a slight possibility of confusion now you can uh, so what did we see here we said that under direct communication what players can achieve is the convex hull of the playoffs from the various nash equilibrium because they can essentially toss coins between uh, uh, toss a coin and choose one of the nash equilibria based on the outcome of the coin now here also the, uh, the this this pro, the, this agreement to to do this to do this randomization is you can think of it this way the, uh, so i justified it in the following way last time where i said well whether to follow this agreement or to play some other strategy was the choice of the player right you can also uh, but remember here this is being conducted as a public lottery means that players get to view the outcome of the lottery itself right so they get to know what what has come out of the coin toss and therefore they know what has been recommended to the other players right so they know the exact thing that has been so now because this contract was not binding so what this means is that after the the players can deviate from the from this even after observing the coin toss so suppose it comes out heads and it turns out that a player has to play a particular the players are now according to the plan the, the for heads you are supposed to play a certain strategy what this uh, this strategy would be something that players would stick to only if it was a nash equilibrium right so so after the coin toss so you think of the coin toss as as again a kind of recommendation that has been made uh, the outcome of the coin toss as a recommendation that has been made to the players players come to know that okay this is what we are supposed to play and there is no so there is no incentive to unilaterally deviate at that stage because uh, if that thing was an ash equilibrium right so the point is the coin the the the, uh, the this 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 strategy was created through communication through pre play communication during play what happens is a particular nash equilibrium gets realized as the outcome of the coin toss and now question is whether players want to follow the recommendation of that nash equilibrium or not and there is no incentive to unilaterally deviate at that stage is this clear so so this is a this is a this is a, a, a this this basically puts it in the same framework as a correlated equilibrium essentially the coin toss outcome is the is your uh, is is like your recommendation to the player yes so the recommendation is uh, the the uh, the the probability with which the various things are uh, various strategies are going to be recommended that is common knowledge but here the important thing is the outcome also is known whereas in correlated strategies players don't need to know the outcome they just only need to know the strategy that has been recommended to them all right so you can think of this as uh, as the uh, the direct communication as a public lottery 
as a lottery whose draw is public, we know the fundamentals that are leading to the various outcomes. Whereas uh, a, a, cor a general correlated strategy is one where the lottery is not public, the lottery is done behind the scenes, you are just told the result that you should be doing this and you are told that confidentially, right? Each player is told that confidentially, okay? Is this clear? And then finally, we have of course Nash equilibrium where none of these mechanisms are, are possible. Okay, so that is the hierarchy. So in each of these cases, you can think of it this way. We essentially, what this does is you take the original game, augment it with a with some preplay mechanism like this, and then create a new game in which the strategy now in which players have to now act based on the information that is coming from the preplay mechanism. Is this clear? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Now the the final thing we which we discussed last time and which came out uh, which was um, where we were talking about I was talking about this case where correlated equilibria I said simulate the outcome of any uh, any preplay communication system right so so we and uh, so how did we model a preplay communication system we said it's it's this it is some uh, some probability distribution like this where R is the reports, this is a profile of reports that players submit to the communication system, M is the set of, uh, is the profile of messages that the communication system generates. So Ri is the report sent by, by player I and Mi is the message received. by player i and what he had to do was he were, um, he had to pick a strategy uh, so i used the notation gamma i and i realized from once i saw it it looked like my r okay so i am going to use delta this time okay so I, so delta i which mapped the messages this is the set of messages to an action Right. Now, this is your communication system, okay. This is your communication system. Essentially, it is just an input output model of the communication system. R goes in, M comes out. You can model anything, any uh, more specific system using this. So, for example, if your players are communicating directly on a bilateral way between, between each other, that can be modeled as a specific case of this by taking you know uh, so suppose player 1 is talking to player 2 then you can have that the this communication system gives probability 1 only only to those uh, only to to when player 1 is talking to player uh, player 2 right uh, the, those kind of, for those sort of events and puts all mass on those sort of events and so on so this this is this is fairly general no, uh, this uh, rather this is completely general it can it models all sorts of bilateral communication and more general communication also where where reports come in and then some kind of device generates the messages okay so the main thing is in fact the the randomness that is present in this okay the the, the this conditional random uh, this random that messages get generated randomly given the given the reports is actually what lets lets you maintain um, uh, that gives you the possibility of partial information to the to various players right if because a correlated strategy we saw relies on partial information it ne you need to tell a player only what he needs to know and is there is there is a vagueness about what the others have been told that noise or that partial information comes about because this medium is noisy right if this medium was perfect with uh, comp uh, if this communication system was perfect and noiseless so for instance when uh, when a certain message was uh, uh, was received by player i he also knew what everyone else is is being recommended or uh, or uh, what everyone else is getting then then it would effectively start collapsing down to a case of direct communication Okay, so the so remember that the noise here is is the is is essentially what is allowing for uh, correlation between the strategies of the players. Okay, or or rather uh, mechanisms that are like correlated equilibria. 
Okay. Now, what I showed last time was that you a correlated equilibrium simulates uh, the outcome of any such uh, any such uh, any such problem. So, what so what, what is the the form of the problem? You now have the original pure strategies of the players, which are these, which are your XIs. Players send these reports. Based on the reports, messages get realized, and the new strategies now for the players are what report should should they send and what should they do once they receive the message so this now becomes the new game and as i said after the preplay communication the choices are now being done independently so players can now choose their report and their uh, uh, the this function or uh, this function delta i independently after that is this clear and we, what we saw was that you take any equilibrium of this, it correspond uh, any equilibrium that comes from this game, right? Where players have to now choose Ri's and delta i's. It's now a simultaneous move game in this space, all right? What uh, the any equilibrium of this game is an a correlated equilibrium, as defined. Uh, you know, you can define a suitable Q, mu for which which satisfies those obedience constraints and uh, so it, it any 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 equilibrium of this game turns out to be a correlated equilibrium all right now can you tell me if the co uh, converse is true so this i didn't get to discuss last time so yesterday so is the converse true so suppose i gave you a correlated equilibrium an arbitrary correlated e correlated equilibrium what is the corresponding communication system that that is there in the background so when when players choose a profile of reports r and a uh, set of strat uh, uh, strategies like these deltas uh, to map their uh, messages to actions the payoff that player i gets from this profile is is equal to sum of m in m Fine. So when this is what player uh, player uh, player I would get from this, all right. Now these R and delta these are pure strategies. So player can randomize over these and come up with a mixed strategy. So a mixed strategy for that would be a sigma I uh, is a probability distribution in R I comma. Um, so I had refined this to be gamma gamma I right. So gamma I is the was the space of all Ri's comma delta is where Ri is a report of player i and delta i mapped his messages to his actions. Okay, so when I look at when I write sigma i of Ri comma delta i, this is the probability of choosing report ri and comma uh, this and this strategy delta i okay all right and what we said was we can create a a uh, a correlated strategy like this mu which was just what is mu going to do think of it this way mu has to basically come up with a is eventually going to result in a probability distribution on the actions right so the chain that we have is that reports lead to messages, messages lead to actions. Okay. So for each pure strategy, you have this chain, and then you average over all the pure strategies because pure strategies are being chosen with us according to a certain distribution, the, according to the a mixed strategy like this. Okay, so let's write it like this. So first, what are the messages that would lead to this particular action? That is this for a particular report, a report profile. Okay, and then what is the probability of choosing this particular report? And then what is the probability of choosing this function itself? 
okay so what is the what are the message you you are summing this is the probability of this is the probability mass of the messages that would lead to action x when the players have chosen a report profile r and a, and a strategy profile this is not delta minus 1 this is delta inverse okay delta inverse of this so delta inverse of of x is basically uh, just the m such that delta of uh, delta of m is equal to x and and delta itself is um, so when I write delta of m I really mean delta 1 of m 1 all the way till delta n of m n. So, now you have this and uh, and you so now I need to multiply this by the probability of picking delta and r right and that pr probability is simply the product over the players of sigma i delta uh, sorry r i comma delta I, right and then sum over all such r i and delta I, r comma sum over all such r and delta this is therefore the final probability by which a certain action gets chosen so reports have been randomized over messages have been randomized over and the functions by that generate actions from messages the choice of such functions is also randomized over all right, uh, all of that has been averaged out and you get a certain probability of picking an action at the end of it all, all right. And what we showed, what we argued was that this is a correlated strategy. Now, what I am asking is, is what is the, con uh, can do you have a converse? So, suppose I gave you an arbitrary correlated strategy, can you come up with a communication system such that its equilibrium gives you this distribution? In equilibrium, the, uh, the actions are being chosen with this probability. One, one simple way of doing this, there could be multiple ways. So, if you have some arbitrary mu, what you could do is the following. You, the channel just directly outputs the actions itself. So, the messages are the actions, okay. It ignores all reports. There are no, rep, you, there is, so it is independently of the reports, it just chooses for you the actions as per mu. And then what we are asking for is the identity function delta then which is just taking the action and just rip, rip, uh, the, the suggested ac the, the action that has come in the message and just implementing that then is the identity function delta and an Nash equilibrium and it will be if mu is incentive compared if it satisfies the obedience constraint. So, if mu is a correlated equilibrium that means it satisfies the obedience constraints then the identity then de all these deltas taken as identity okay which means uh, by taken as identity means that um, so so you take new of so firstly you take the space of messages to be equal to the space of actions itself m equal to x all right so the messages are in fact the action that you are supposed to take so that's so message when you get a message it's basically telling you take this action and now what you do is delta was supposed to map your message to an action you just apply an identity mapping okay so delta is the delta i of m i now is just doing m i or in short telling you what action itself is to be taken all right and this if if your um, correlated equilibrium is incentive uh, has uh, satisfies the incentive compatibility or the obedience constraints then such this will then be an such a strategy will be an equilibrium of uh, of this system with uh, of um, uh, of this game okay so you have taken m equal to x and your communication system as i said has just ignores all reports there are no reports to be taken i mean you just do this effectively that's what's happened effectively that is exactly what's happened so that the or communication system that's what i was saying that the communication system noise is the playing the role of mediation so the communication system that you have built right that uh, that you have trusted to generate or your random number generator or whatever it is serving the role of a mediator so instead of talking to each other we are we are sort of leaving the co the co the coordination or correlation to that device right and that device has been built in such a way that you know it keeps this kind of uh, confidentiality and so on and and that actually helps us all of us do better if everyone wanted to know what was going on what was happening in the lottery right you would actually achieve less 
Yeah. Hmm. They're not unique. This is one way of doing it. So the so what we wanted to show was the set of payoffs achievable in one is equal to the set of payoffs achievable in the other. And so that's all I need to show. So for me, I just need to show that the distribution can be simulated. Once the distribution is simulatable, then the set of payoffs becomes the same, uh, is the same. Is this clear? So actually, this is I I, I find this to be very interesting. I mean, there are uh, you can you know there are many many themes that one can build on top of this. You know, just any see essentially all, any kind of decentralized control or decentralized decision making is finally about coordination. Fundamentally about coordination, right? And for coordination when but coordination furthermore with incomplete information. Each guy gets to see a limited part of the underlying truth, and yet we have to coordinate, right? So now that that you can do this kind of, you know, you can a simple thing everyone thinks that they could do is just you know do this sort of coordinate uh, coordinate by random uh, doing a coin toss between each other's choices, and that's that's your limited sort of direct communication option or public lottery or whatever. Once you do, uh, once you allow for, uh, once you allow a, a, once you bring in this third party device, right? Uh, which everyone has agreed agreed on to so actually you can actually do uh, get achieve a larger set of payoffs through that okay i if you want to do this uh, again uh, think about this pre play communication formally the essentially what every recommendation is doing is defining for you an information set it is telling you what possibly th what are the possible things that ha could have been recommended to the other players Based on that, you just do a a, a a player just does a, a you know he finds the posterior distribution based on that given what has been recommended to him, all right, and uh, and and then uh, given given that it is in his interest to um, it is in his interest to follow the recommendation. That's your identity mapping being very the Nash equilibrium. Now, uh, in some places, I've also seen a generalization of this. Essentially, because I said you, you can also do the following, you can look for a more general version in the following sense that well each guy has been uh, uh, you know the, the communication system is generating information for the players and now players are no, going to take actions right. Now you can so essentially now this is a this is a game of incomplete information between the players. Players have to now take choose their uh, choose their strategies as a function of their information. All right. Now you can look for any equilibrium in this. Doesn't ha doesn't have to be this identity wala equilibrium. Okay. And some people call that as a correlated equilibrium. All right. Now the the revelation uh, this this whole rev uh, this whole thing that uh, sim this um, that a correlated equilibrium simulates this uh, simulates any outcome means that you can actually reduce that back down to this back down to a correlated equilibrium eventually you know where the action itself is being recommended and it has to be followed it is expected that that is followed but so this is just a more general version of of putting the same uh, same thing so so a correlated equilibrium of the game with communication was so i is just this mu such that this is greater than equal to and uh, so and i said that this can be equivalently written as this x minus i in capital x minus i So for every recommendation, it is in his in the player's interest to follow the recommendation. Then it, 
so the i had mentioned something yesterday about the posterior also because and i just said posterior now the there's the reason this has been written without the posterior is because there is that possibility that a strategy um, that we are writing like so a recommended strategy xi actually occurs with probability zero so you can't really divide by that probability and so exactly posterior is not defined so if you don't want to get into those technicalities what you you just uh, you instead write it directly in terms of the joint distribution instead of getting into the posterior okay so the mu is uh, written here uh, the, that's why the mu has been uh, written this way otherwise if you, if these were all occurring with positive if the x i is if each x i was occurring with positive probability then i could just divide by that and then write a you know a proper conditional distribution uh, of so probability distribution of um, x minus i you could write something like mu of x minus i given x i and so on ok all right Think. let us keep this in mind and we will now write a more general version of this for games where where uh, where players have some private information now i mentioned this yesterday the equilibrium of any communication system can be simulated by a correlated equilibrium today we argued that the converse is also true but remember the in a correlated equilibrium the communication is from the mediator or from that device to the players right so what has happened in this formula is that the reports have gotten av averaged over so there is no role at all for the reports left even when i looked at the converse i just made it this independent of the reports right now why does what this effectively is saying is that there is nothing for you to report nothing for the players to report actually to the play, uh, to the mediator and the reason for that is players don't have any private information okay if players had private information of their own then the whole game would then the the then there would be a, a reason for them to talk to the mediator and also listen from the to the mediator okay and also hear what the mediator has to say Okay, so now that is what uh, we can go through a generalization for this. Okay.